Hello and welcome to See If It Sticks, the news at Sticks. This is where we take news from the world and we kind of mock it, make fun of it and discuss it among ourselves. But first, over to Dan in the news centre. This just in, Ross. <laughs> exactly, that's exactly how Hello, it is. Hello, Ross. <laughs> this just in. I'm getting a small delay. Yes. <laughs> uh, so I've got uh, a little bit of, um, I saw this actually in the news. It's a very, very long news article that I spotted the other day. Um, but interestingly, it has got something that is pertinent to our show. A few episodes ago, probably a fair few episodes ago now, do you remember we talked about noise in the movie theatre? Yes. yes. And I believe we, we developed some sort of ninja sniper. We did, yeah. Something yeah. like that. Ninja to, snipers. To, Don't tell me it's a fucking thing. No, no, no. I'm, I'm, not telling you, I'm not telling you it's a thing. But what we were, t- were particularly focusing on was um, kids eating sweets and having uh, late night showings with only adults that yep. would only eat at the appropriate times. So uh, I saw, weirdly, uh, an article... Um, uh, I can't actually quote where the bloody article is from because I seem to have uh, cut that off of the top of my sheet here. But it's about basically the rise of popcorn. Oh, okay. Um, yeah. Popcorn po- is doing well again. When, popcorn, a retrospective. When pop, 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 popcorn, pop, cop, 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 popcorn, 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 popcorn. We're breaking up a little bit here, Dan. We're breaking up. I can't quite. Screw it, screw it out of popcorn. Um, it been here for years. <laughs> when it came, when it came up, when it was devised and whatnot. So I've highlighted some of the um, the interesting facts about it. Um, now, uh, this is from uh, a book uh, <laughs> called by Andrew Smith, the author of Popped Culture: A Social History of Popcorn. Oh my God! I was right with my popcorn retrospective. Right. So bas- basically, um, it, it, it essentially says um, it, they believe that it was. Um, it came from Central America. It was, you know, it's obviously it's maize. Um, most likely North American whalers went to Chile, found varieties of popcorn, picked them up and thought that they were cute and brought them back to New England as early as the 19th century. But essentially by 1848, popcorn, the snack food, was prevalent enough to be included in the dictionary of Americanism. So this is when it sort of came to prevalence. Popcorn had literally exploded into the scene and was, and was available everywhere, especially at entertainment sites like circuses and fairs. In fact, there was only really one entertainment site where the snack was absent, theatres. Now, this is the quote. So I'm not talking Are you movie. talking theatres, movie theatres, theaters or yes. theatres like actors? It's 1840. Yes. Okay, well, okay, well, yeah. So, so theatres. Yeah. Um, and basically the reason that it became so popular was because it was easy to make and you didn't need a kitchen to make it and no. it was sort of quite portable. Now, moving on. Movie theatres. Now the introduction of movie theatres. Movie theatres wanted nothing to do with popcorn, Smith says, because they were trying to duplicate what was done in real theatres. They had beautiful carpets and rugs and didn't want popcorn being ground into it. Movie theatres were trying to appeal to a highbrow clientele and didn't want to deal with the distracting trash of concessions or the distracting noise that snacking during a film would create. Yeah. So now we're talking. So the the high market, the highbrow society during the introduction of movie theatres didn't want that fucking noise. So what did they eat? Minstrels instead or what? No, they just didn't have all these snacks. Yeah. But by 1930... Movies snacks, it's just not the movies for me. So by 1930, so this is when um, sound started to be introduced to films. So you didn't have the piano player anymore. So yeah, <laughs> so, unfortunately, literacy was no longer required to attend films. Play me off. Um, movie theaters had reached 90 million per week, right? But they, movie theater owners were still hesitant to bring snacks inside their theaters. So their movie theaters got more popular during the Great Depression. Popcorn was still quite popular. So. In the mid-1930s, the movie theatre business started to go under, but those that began serving popcorn and other snacks survived. However, take for example a Dallas movie theatre chain that installed popcorn machines in 80 theatres, but refused to install machines in their five best theatres, which they still considered too high class to sell popcorn in. So really, what we're saying here is that snacking during a movie is for fucking peasants. And commoners. White trash. The muck. The muck. That yeah, is it. Okay. That is, and that is exact, was exactly what we were saying when we were talking about that family that was interrupting Rogue One, a Star Wars story, is that they were fucking 
horrible, scummy bastards. Rogue One, Snotty comma, peasants. a Star Wars story. Yes. Sorry. Um, Colon, isn't it? Oh, sorry, yeah, you are right. <laughs> <laughs> but does that make me common, though? Because I don't really like going to the cinema without snacks. Yes. Okay. <laughs> yeah. It's something we all knew. You are a filthy peasant man. <laughs> now no, it's out there. I spit Essex on person. you, Ross. No, I, but I think it's clear that, you know, you know, you look at the, the sort of the highbrow moviegoers at the, the uh, beginning of cinema, people that needed to be able to read, you sort of got the more intelligent people, and these are the people they wanted to be coming back, and they didn't want disgusting rubbish on the floor, people snacking and making noise about the things. So now what I think we need to do is we need to have a renaissance of this ideal and make movie theatres So you have to wear a suit to the again. theatre and stuff. A yeah, little bow tie. top and tails. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's a black tie event to go to the yeah. movies. Yeah. Like going to the opera. So now yeah. we should have, we should have, we should have highbrow showings, highbrow cinema showings where you can go there and you can like be served. It. Have a, have a girl. And a movie critic comes up at the beginning and it's like, gives an S a lecture. Yeah. Uh, have, like a half hour lecture. Have the, the um, movie have the, the, um, the people come around with like cigars and, dr- <laughs> and drinks get served, maybe some whiskey at the showing. Yeah. Yep. Right. Um, monocle, we could all, monocle holders. Yeah, we could all have like. Oh, a, we could have these little glasses so we could see the screen a bit closer. Yeah, so some opera glasses. Yeah, and then um, you know when something surprising happens, you can pop your monocle out and go, "Oh my!" Yes, and then um, for like, uh, and then I'll be telling about to go, "Shut the fuck up!" And then my walrus-like mustache will quiver. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we need. That is what we need to add to our. Oh, our, our, our I, I totally man. agree with you, but would we have to smarten up a little bit because the scruffs likes of us? Would we have to shave cleanly and to remove our ear tunnels? I think um, if we're going to do highbrow, we've got to do highbrow, haven't we? We can't just fucking half ass highbrow. Anyone can go to fucking theatre these days. Oh, I just, you know, whack on. Well, this is what we're doing. We're, we're going to make it a highbrow, so not just everyone. Whack on a shirt somewhere. and a, you know, a, a nice, smart, casual shirt and some. A suit jacket. You know, non, As you would wear non, to non, a. Uh, non mucky trainers. A movie premiere. Hmm. Yeah. 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 Looking, looking rather dapper. If you're not in the film, you don't have to dress up in a suit. You just have to go dress smart cash. Yeah, smart casual, mate. So there we go. So the the movie theaters didn't want didn't want snacks to begin with. No, but the, we forced it upon them. The greed took over, and now they mark up popcorn by five thousand percent. That and the fucking rest, and it doesn't cost them anything, does it? That's no. true. And they don't even make it in in house anymore. It's one of those big giant it does, bags. It does actually. It does actually go on to say that about you know the reason it's so popular with movie theaters is, is they had concession stalls in. Um, uh, but they, they sort of realised that they could cut out the middleman and make more money and popcorn you know is a big bit, it's got a huge markup on it yeah because it you know maize co- costs absolutely nothing and no. then it takes you know a few minutes to pop it whack some salt or sugar or whatever butter on there yeah. which also costs very little Fuck and all, yeah. then you, you've got a Let's Got all a good go product. to the lobby, get ourselves a drink. Dude. Yeah, still don't explain why I have to pay six pounds for a fucking Coke, though. No. <laughs> no. Watered down Pepsi. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. I'm not sure why. The syrup box hasn't been changed in a month. Yeah. yeah. I always buy bottled at the cinema. Yeah. Always buy bottled. I just don't drink. As I said in that episode, I don't snack and I don't drink. Because I don't want to go for a pee and I don't want to make any noise. Mm. I'm normally right. I'd have to take it easy on the Coke if I go too hard and heavy at the beginning then I will need to pee yeah, so I, I tend to sip towards the beginning and then I, when I can see the climax is coming I'm fucking tucking yeah. in third act third yeah. act third act is when I finish that bottle off yeah <laughs> the snacks are gone in the fucking trailers but the drink lasts till the end <laughs> normally okay. that's fine so you got something for us uh, yeah over to Don with the sports thank uh, you Ross <laughs> sports have happened we're going to um, back Go! to you Sports, sports team, team. Um, back to you in the studio we are going to do a little game show today something Ooh. I saw on BuzzFeed the other day and I instantly saved it and thought this will be good to do with the boys okie dokie I've been boning up have you Dom boning up well I've been boning but yeah. <laughs> did you get did you get the revision material no Ross sent it over literally yeah, like did you not get it? seven or eight hours ago no. oh shit I've memorised well, it I think it. you might win Dan okay fair enough uh, we are playing who said it Donald Trump or Alan Partridge? Oh, <laughs> shit! <laughs> I'm pretty good because I'm Holy a big Alan Partridge shit. fan. Yeah, <laughs> I've, I've only watched very little Alan Partridge. I've so this seen is gonna some be Alan Partridge, hilarious. but they are both very similar and kind of scary. I, when I played this earlier, I got eight out of 12. Oh my God, I can't believe that you've got little little car, like a little pack and everything. Oh, right, Holy shit. 
Well, it's lucky because I'm a big Trump fan, so uh, <laughs> I, I know all of his quotes. So you know all the Partridge quotes. China, go Trump. If there's uh, the use of the word great more than four times, I'm sure yeah, it's yeah, Trump. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. shit, they're all got great in them. Um, so what, I guess I'll ask the question. You'll both tell me what you think, whether you agree with each other or you might be different, yeah. and then yeah. I'll score you based um, on... Just to say, as a disclaimer, uh, the me being a Trump fan was a joke. I, we, I think everyone got that. True, but I think it, yeah, yeah. I should just make it clear. Just yeah. think, just I don't case. think anybody would say that out loud. Anyone, dumb, crazy, enough to, crazy anyone dumb enough things. to think that you were telling the truth probably supports Trump. Yeah, you're probably, so, right. yeah. They're probably with it, you. It's, uh, yeah, it's a crazy, crazy world we're living in at the moment. Uh, so I just thought, you know, I should just make it clear because anything can clearly happen at the yeah. moment. So, uh, you know. Anything can happen in the next half hour. Bum, 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 bum. Like Dan beating Dom at an Anna Partridge game. Yeah, yeah. This is going to be unlikely. All right, you ready? Number one, this is a quote, and you have to tell me who said it. Yes. They might eat them in your country, sweetheart. We don't hear. I don't want to eat an intestine or a pig's heart on a mini muffin. That's Alan Partridge. Partridge. Yeah, you go for Partridge. Yeah. Yeah. It is indeed Partridge. Maybe because I don't know Alan Partridge very well, maybe you should answer first. The fir- You answer first the first question. Yeah, and then you And answer. then I'll answer first the Good next pan. one. Uh, apparently answer. he said that while chatting to his Eastern European girlfriend, Sonia. Yes. Number two. In a caravan. In a caravan? They live in a caravan because he was there getting a house built. Oh, God, I'm going to lose. Yeah. So, <laughs> um, so you're answering first this time, Yeah. You? Okay. Number two. This is going to be an easy one, I think, because I got uh, this one. Okay. No more, massive, nas- sorry. no more massive injections. Tiny children are not horses. Oh, God. Partridge? Trump. It's Trump. Fuck! I do not know about him. That's about, um, he that's about MRSA. Um, he Jabs. came out. He came out with this partridge level weirdness in a 2014 tweet about vaccinations. What he actually well, says. I know, I know he's tweeted about vaccinations, but it was the horse thing. It was the the, the your your child is not a horse or whatever you just said. It sounds was, very partridge. Was, was, was this this is me. why this gave me so great. What, it completely <laughs> threw me. Because yeah, it's such Dude. a partridge. I'm like. in the lead. His actual tweet here says, "No more massive vaccinations. Uh, no more massive injections. Sorry, tiny children are not horses. One vaccine at a time, over time." Good point. I don't okay, even know well, what he's saying. Then. At this point, the man has no like idea of English syntax. Is very odd. Here's a very short one. Number three, women. What are they? That's Alan Partridge. Yeah, I'm going to go with Partridge. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it is indeed Partridge, yes. Uh, it does sound like a question that would stump Trump, but it's actually from an episode of Knowing Me, Knowing You. So that's uh, both of you there. It's just before he brings out... Um, oh, you ever watch The Thick of It? No. You ever watch The Thick of It? No. Oh, don't worry then. It's written by similar people. Um, I kind of want Dan to do this in, a, in his Trump voice. I mean, even though we don't My know whether Trump it's Trump or not. My Trump voice is so bad. I, I, it was, I quite it was, like it. It was sheer luck that I pulled this out the other day. But I'm going to go and say that this one is Trump. Yes. No, that's that wasn't, <laughs> oh, wasn't right, oh, that right. way. Yeah, I, yeah, okay. I just think it just sounds it's like... Gonna a, it's going to be huge. It's going to be huge. Do you mind if I sink back a little? Because your breath is very bad. It really is. Um... I'm going to go with Trump. I'm going to go with Partridge. Dan gets the point. Oh! oh. Now all I have to do is maintain your by following you. It yeah. definitely sounds rude enough to be a Partridge, but Trump actually said this to Larry King live on air in 1989. Oh. The, oh, the mighty Larry King as well. Yeah. Fuck, he doesn't give a fuck. Who's in the lead? He does look like You are both drawing well. three all. Oh. Uh, so Dom first on this one mm. <laughs> you're going to get this one <laughs> <laughs> when I used to see you in reception do you know what I used to think oh she's nicer than my wife <laughs> <laughs> oh you're nicer that's Alan Partridge well I'm going to go for Partridge <laughs> <laughs> you're both correct <laughs> ooh that's um, um when he, he says that to Jill people. yes when, when they're firing. on their date at the cracking owl sanctuary yes I think that's filmed at Eagle Heights Near where I live. Number six. Yes. I've never seen a thin person drinking a Diet Coke. Oh my God, I know this one. I saw this the other day. Trump. I'm going to go with Trump too. You are both correct. It is a Trump. Uh, It's another tweet. This time from 2012. 
he literally says that I've never seen a thin person drinking Diet Coke which is true <laughs> but then if you weren't if you were thin you wouldn't need to drink a Diet Coke I guess um, number seven what about lethal injection gas chamber electric chair we'll spoil it for choice oh shit I think that's Trump. I am going to go for Partridge. Dan gets the point. No! <laughs> when he hosted a political debate on Knowing Me, Knowing You. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I've done that one. <laughs> have I just pulled into the lead? Uh, you have. Oh. Six to five. Oh. I have so many fabulous friends who happen to be gay, but I'm a traditionalist. Dominic? Is that, is oh, that, hang on, who asked uh, first? I think I, it's it's me you. answering first. Yeah. you answering first, yeah. Can I hear the quote again, please? I have so many fabulous friends who happen to be gay, but I'm a traditionalist. Oh, I'm going to go for Trump. I'm going to go for Trump as well. You're both correct. Um... The full quote is this, right? And try and get your head around it because it doesn't make any sense to me. It's like in golf, a lot of people, I don't want this to sound trivial, but a lot of people are switching to these really long putters. Very unattractive. It's weird. Trump. No, this is the same. This is the same quote. This is is the the whole quote. Um, You see these great players with these really long putters because they can't sink three footers anymore. And I hate it. I'm a traditionalist. I have so many fabulous friends who happen to be gay, but I'm a traditionalist. What's that got to do with fucking golf the man's insane he is insane oh, isn't he? it's just the ramblings of a madman it is right next one number nine who's answering first Dom Dom she's drunk and a racist I'll tolerate one but not both and a partridge I would go for partridge you're both correct it's difficult when uh, you need to play your poker face Dom yeah. when you answer a partridge one that you definitely know you need to make mm. out like you're unsure True, but now when I do that, Dan's gonna think I'm right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Maybe we need a T and a P card. Hmm. Oh, buzzers. <laughs> um, that was from Alpha Papa. Isn't that the film where uh, what's that? The one who's now in Game of Thrones gets her boobies out. Which one's in Game of Thrones? Oh, the Queen, Cersei Lannister. Yeah, what's her name in real life? Lena Headey. Lena Headey. That's yes, it. Yeah. Okay. Um, number ten. I'd love to get my hands on the bastard or bitch might be a lady who's answering first Dan uh, I'm going to go with Partridge I'm going to go with Partridge also you're both correct um, yep it's Alan again after discovering that someone has vandalised his car down to the final two and Dan is in the lead with one Ooh, this is tight this is going to be close I have a great relationship with the blacks that's Trump. I'm going to go with Trump. It seems it seems too obvious not to be Trump. It is indeed Trump. Trump said this during an interview with Talk 1300 Radio in Albany. <laughs> Canada. <laughs> Number 12. Check out sex tape. That is that it? That's it. Check out sex it's tape. It's a little bit out of context, but... I guess I guess it makes sense. Is there a colon in there or anything? Nope. Just check out sex tape. Or one word. Oh, not a one word. Sorry, a one sentence. Check out sex tape. Um. Uh, I'm gonna go. Trump. Just for shits and gigs, I'm gonna go for Partridge. You might as well at this point, aren't you? Dan wins. Yeah. Is it Trump? It's Trump, yeah. Uh, it, the whole, it's another tweet. It says, did crooked Hillary help disgusting, open bracket, check out sex tape and past, close bracket, Alicia M become a US citizen so she could use her in the debate? Read it. I mean, right. it doesn't make any fucking sense to me. It's at the bottom there. Does that make Maybe any sense Maybe if you know you? a bit more about, I don't know anything about American politics. But did no, crooked no. Hillary help disgusting, check out sex tape and past? Alicia M so Alicia M's US got a sex tape and pass citizen so she could use her in the debate do you know what the the, the most concerning thing about these 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 uh, quotes is that 36 
1,623 people liked that on Twitter, and 18.2 thousand people retweeted that. Jeez. The ramblings of a, of a fucking nutter. The Coke one's got more, 63,000 um, likes, 61,000 retweets, retweets. But do people retweet as a, like an irony? Do you think people are like, fuck, Don't look, know. look what this cunt's saying? I, I, w- I, wouldn't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't like to say. Uh, to the victor goes the spoils, Dan, you can keep all these if you want. Oh, thank you. <laughs> thank God all we've got in power is a Margaret Thatcher cosplayer. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, like, uh, it's going to be really nice now if uh, the police ever investigate me for whatever reason. They go through my drawer and they're like, well, he's got a lot of racist propaganda. <laughs> <laughs> and they go through Dom's and he's got a lot of Alan Partridge. Yeah. I think the same. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's wrap oh, it up this, for this week. Um, send us your problems. Sticketpod.com when the website's working. It went down the other day, didn't it? Didn't it did. every, everything went down. It did. I had some emails from people about email websites and things disappearing but it's back now it's all good um, yeah stickitpod.com is links to all of our social media you can message us your problems there your messages and your problems run the show so send us whatever nonsense comes into your mind send it to us we want it um, for this week I have been Ross I've been Dan I have been Dom